G'day folks, uh, for this afternoon's little equipment teardown we're going to have a look at this pump and motor assembly from the Battenfeld injection moulding machine. Now we're not going to take the components themselves apart but we're just going to break it down into its three main groups. Or maybe just two, I might leave the pump coupled to its bell housing as it is. But I'll uh, we'll disconnect the both of them and have a bit of a look at them because it's fairly high dollar equipment here. The motor is made by ABB, as you can see on top. It's rated at 10 horsepower, I think. Yeah, 7.5 kilowatts, 10 horse. It's dual voltage, so it can be running 220, 240, which can pull up to 27 amps per phase, which is a fair bit. Uh, I would like to use it as a rotary phase converter, so I'm going to take it off, give it a good wash down, mount it shaft down on a stand and just attach my control box over here, over the top of where the um, regular terminal box cover is at the moment, which I've, I've had it off and I've had a bit of a play around with it, but it's uh, quite difficult to start with that pump on there because it starts at full load. And the machine also had a warm-up cycle where it would sit there and just load the pump up to warm the hydraulic oil, and it would do that for half an hour, it just straight, before it would even let you uh, let you run the machine. So that's why my amp or amp drawer went up whenever it, every time I tried to start the machine up as a whole it would just sit there and start going into its warm-up cycle immediately and uh, yeah the old fuse board didn't like it. I didn't blow any fuses but I pulled the whole building and house down to a low enough voltage that the UPS kicked in and my neighbours even noticed the lights dimming when I was doing it as well so that's a first. When you start browning out the whole neighbourhood, you know you're playing with some serious juice. So, yeah. It's also got a solenoid on here. I'm guessing that's part of its little load-unload thing. The way it can... Uh, or I think it's variable displacement or variable output. And that's what these solenoids will do. That one's in an interesting spot where it is, but this one here... I imagine it's to do with variable displacement. Couplings made by Fluitech, it's PT300 slash 4.0 slash M, made in Germany. Uh, FL080E seems to be the type. This pump. It's a. Uh oh, it's leaking on the floor. Well, I'll cap that off before we read the plate on the pump. It's made by Mannesman Rex Roth, so it's the same as all the pilot valves and things on the system. They're all made by the same company. But yeah, I'm going to plug off all these inlets and outlets and make it basically safe to store without getting debris in it or anything like that. Any dust. That's the outlet, so it's not so bad, but I want to keep debris and dust out of the inlets and the bearing gear case that's a spill that goes back to tank and that's just any fluid that blows past the actual pump stage and is also used to lubricate the bearings so the main seal on here is never really under any real pressure it's all in here and any bleed through goes through the bearings and everything lubricates it and then goes back to tank at atmospheric pressure or near atmospheric pressure you, you can't back that up for any real amount of pressure Otherwise you'll blow it out the main seal and into the pump bell housing. Then things get messy and nasty. So always make sure that that can dump back to tank without any restriction. Otherwise you will blow your main seal out. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's start. Separate motor first. Oh, sorry, cap. Separate motor and then go from there. I want to wash the motor down so I'll screw the cover back on and seal it back up again. I'll wash the motor down another day. I just thought I'd give you a bit of a look at it and how big it is. <laughs> It'll make an awesome electric car motor. Uh, the Micra is too good to chop up and modify. I'm after something with a buggered engine or transmission, something like that. Something that's really rough that can be um, played around with. Jay the Aussie says he knows of another RAV4 Cabrio that's in pretty rough condition, fifth gear's going on it, so yeah, it's a possibility. I do know how to fix fifth gear on those while the transmission's in the car, so I don't know. 
three raves are better than two, I guess. Hmm. Okay, and we are apart. It's a decent motor. Give it that much. <laughs> Very good bearings. Yep, she's still nice and smooth. Little spider coupling. Flex coupling. Nice housing too. It's even got a vibration isolating rubber disc between the pump end and the actual bell housing. That's really neat. Good tight seals on the pump. Everything's capped off and I rotated the suction up to the top just so that it can stand on either end. But yeah, that's a complete pump unit. The pump itself is it made by, well we know it's made by, it's made by Mannesman Rex Roth and you know, they've painted over the numbers. Mineral oil, uh, yeah, made in Germany. Pretty decent pump. It's got a part code on there somewhere but I have to strip that paint back. Yeah. That's the normal colour of the motor, your traditional ABB blue. They've obviously painted everything in the machine before it went in, and even after it went in, they would have given it an overspray to make it white. But I'll give it a good wash down, and it should be just fine. I'm just got to wash all this old hydraulic oil residue and other crap off it. Decent sized motor. <laughs> uh, what I've got to do next, I've got to get that off and put it with that. I want to keep the whole thing together. It's like urethane, it's made by Spidex. Yeah, it's not rubber, it's like a hard urethane. Very good. Now when I got it, the bolts had signs of being removed before, the paint was all broken off them. And just the fact that this coupling shows a mark from a previous coupling being on there, I'd say this thing has shredded its uh, uh, flexible disc and then eventually eaten itself at one point and they've thrown a replacement on. Because you can see up there, they've had a, uh, a larger coupling on it at some point. This one here must be a replacement. I don't know what that says, but yeah, I'd say that's a replacement coupling. They certainly had it apart at one point. It's been opened before. The motor's original. If it had been replaced, I doubt they would have painted it the exact same colour and tone and type of paint as the machine. They would have just thrown a regular blue ABB motor in there. So that hasn't been done. Maybe the pump's been out for service or reco. I'd be willing to bet that, maybe, but then the bolt heads don't have their epoxy paint broken off them, so I'd say this pump's never been out either. So to remove this normally, you don't take it out as a whole unit. I got lucky and the cap screws that were captive inside this housing were jammed up enough I could just spin the nuts off. But normally you'd take the motor off first, leaving this in the machine, because the motor's more commonly a consumable item, or you'd take the pump off and separate that. You'll leave this bolted to the machine, but that hasn't been off. The motor has, so maybe they've, uh, yeah, they've done the coupling on it, and probably motor bearings while they were at it. Because that's silky smooth. Not a whisper, not a grind, nothing. Which is perfect. There we go. It looks like they used bearing mount to mount it up and a little bit of heat and a little bit of leverage and away she came. It just slid straight off. Perfect. Again, made in Germany. Perfect fit. I'd be willing to bet maybe that didn't ever come off. I don't know. It does have the original grub screw mark. I can't see any other older grub screw marks so maybe it hasn't been off. Plus it's a German Spidex fitting so uh, maybe, yeah, maybe they've never had it apart. At least for no real reason. They might have just replaced the flex disc, but yeah, very good. 
as long as you don't hammer on the shafts of these motors you won't really hurt the bearings it's only uh, yeah, try and spin it off. I actually tapped it that way, like just tapped gently on one of these legs just to move it a little bit and then applied a little bit of force from behind and it just slid straight off. You can see the residual bearing mount. Yeah, it smells like Loctite bearing mount compound. There's a V-seal there for splash proofing. This motor will be uh, weatherproof or splash proof. Good for cooling towers and other things like that. Uh, what's its IP rating? IP55 so yeah it's 5 on the dust proofing, 5 on the waterproofing so it's actually a uh, weatherproof motor awesome oh, I guess the only other thing to do is to try and power it up <laughs> you know I wouldn't do a video with it like this without actually trying to put power to it well this thing is an instant breaker tripper when it's wired for 220 volts doesn't matter what I try and do just snap off go the breakers so yeah I'm not sure what I can do with this one I hope I can soft start it and use it as a uh, rotary phase converter but if I can't, can't even supply enough power for it to start it's kinda useless then it will definitely be an electric car motor um, yeah what more can I say sorry about no uh, startup but thanks for watching when I get time I'll reconfigure it for a 415 volt but again I'll probably need to get the RPC going and or the smaller one and give it a bit of a jump start but yeah she takes out breakers alright 16 amp or 25 amp not a chance just snap off the shaft does start spinning you see the shaft move like that and it lights out or at least partially the UPS and things keep things up for a bit but not good. Oh well, it's fairly high horsepower so what can I say, this shed is not rated for 10 horsepower electric motors. Thanks for watching.